Believe it or not, it's episode three of the Wednesday Lunch Bake. We're tackling a new project today. One of my personal favorite things to eat in the whole wide world, banana bread. Who doesn't love a little bit of banana bread? Unless you don't like bananas. This is a super simple recipe, and I know that many people, including myself, are famous for having bananas that go overripe and saying, oh, I'll make banana bread, and then never actually making it because you think it might be a long process, because you think bread might take a long time to make. However, this stuff right here, this is all the ingredients you'll need. It's not a lot. This is a super quick recipe, easy to make, super delicious. So let me get my stuff organized real quick. Okay, you're gonna start with two to three very ripe bananas, a third of a cup of melted butter. Mine's not melted yet, but it will be. One teaspoon of baking soda, a pinch of salt, three quarter cups of sugar, one large egg, beaten, and one teaspoon of pure vanilla extract. If you don't have pure vanilla, that's okay. It can be artificial. And your one and a half cups of all purpose flour. So we're gonna get started. And the only other thing that you will need equipment wise today that is special is the bread tin. You might have one at home that's, you know, a solid metal one like that, um, that'll be this shape. Um, it needs to be about four by eight or three by eight. This one's probably a little closer to three by eight. So I might not use all my batter, but I've got my bread tin here and you'll need that to make a de bread. We're gonna start our oven at 350 degrees. And remember, you gotta make sure your oven's up to temp. Tree fitty. Next. So we're gonna take our bananas and you're gonna peel all these bad boys. These bananas should be pretty ripe. You know, if you're having trouble peeling the bananas, if they're still kind of green, they're probably not ready to be put in banana bread. So I've got it down. Now, you'll have to mash these up and you can use a fork or you can use, well, where did I go? A mashing utensil. Now this one I think is actually a uh, cold butter cutter which you would use in making pastries but it'll work so I just get to squishing it up if you're using something like this you know make sure you get it all out when you're done you mash these up pretty good should be a pretty mushy consistency should look like baby food pretty much you know, you don't want any big chunks or anything. Now you probably know that there's not really a lot of wet ingredients in this recipe. Like in the dough mix that we did for donuts or in the cupcakes, we added water or milk. But there's not any in this one. Now that, now I'm taking a guess here. So don't you're gonna get this one right at trivia night just because I said so. I'm pretty sure that they're not using any water or a lot of liquid in this because there is liquid, there's water right in the banana. There's not a lot, but there's a little bit. Or maybe I printed my recipe wrong and I'm missing something. Who knows? I'll double check though. It's always safe to be sure. So I got that all mashed up. And it should look a little bit like this. Just squish banana. Oh, I missed one. That is smushed. Noise. Thank you for your service. So now we're gonna take our butter and we're gonna melt it. Now, don't put this in the microwave for a minute and expect it to be perfect. If you do that, it'll probably boil. And you don't want it to boil, you don't want it to crust up, you just want it to be melted. So do this in like 10 or 15 second intervals. Just start it, let it stop, check it, start it, let it stop, check it. To help this go a little bit faster is cut it up. I have it in one big chunk here, but what I'll do is I'll slice it two or three times so there's more surface area. And we all know if there's more surface area, things get hotter or colder faster. Thanks! Just cutting my butter. 
Put it in the microwave. Just cutting my butter. Cutting through my days. I'm just cutting the butter. I'm not cutting the cheese. I'm just cutting my butter. Cutting butter with ease. Well, that's melting. Make sure you got all the other stuff, but keep an eye on it. Oh, that's hot. Okie doke. So if you're doing this at home, the first thing you want to do before you get any of your other ingredients out is definitely take a stick of butter out of your freezer or out of your fridge. The butter melts way, way better. Um, it's a lot easier if it's already soft. So it won't run everywhere and you won't waste any butter. It won't go bad. It just makes your whole process simpler. Next, so I'm going to take my baking soda, it looks nothing like soda, my salt, and that melted butter, get out of there. Get all that good butter. So I'm going to mix all this in real quick, get stirred around good. Don't worry, we didn't forget about that stuff, it'll go in there too. Squishy. Looking at it now, I'm thinking that the amount of butter that's in here is also helping uh, compensate for the lack of other fluids. So I got my baking soda, my salt. Now I need to beat my egg. Pop it open. Make sure you don't get any shell in there. Just want the stuff on the inside. Bye. Make sure that you. Now, if I'm also correct, egg is what helps keep everything together. You've probably noticed that egg is in almost everything we bake so far. And it's probably an ingredient on any box thing that you do. Egg is something that helps hold all the ingredients together when they're baking. So when you take it out of the bread pan, it doesn't just fall apart. It's the magic. There's that. This is looking... Super liquidy, so I'm almost 100% positive that that's why we don't need any water, any milk. Gonna mix in this flour. And we're gonna mix this flour in. Again, always making sure we're getting all the dry bits. You don't wanna leave out any of the flour. It's very important that you don't get that dryness, dry pockets. Okay, now it's looking like some dough. Yeah, once you get start getting all that flour stirred in, it starts looking like bread dough. Oh, the bananas. It smells so good. And then, because I was silly and I forgot to bring the spray that we used in our last video, we're going to have to butter this in a more traditional way. Now, it's just a little bit harder and I'm still using the butter that has been, you know, pre-softened. It was back in the fridge for like five minutes. So I'm just going to take a little bit of butter. Try to get as little on my hands as possible and I am failing at that task. This is the more traditional way to to grease a pan. Woo! Oh my! Okay, so I'm just going to take this thick butter and I'm going to rub the bottom. Rub it down the bottom. You know what? Get out of here. No help whatsoever. Okay, maybe it was better that way. <laughs> it's so slick. I'm just going to rub that butter all over the place. Now, it doesn't cover quite as well as the spray we used last week. And that's why I like to use a spray. It just covers a little bit better. It's not as messy on your hands. Speaking of hands, you should be washing your hands before you do any of this. I always make sure I wash my hands and I use a little hand sanitizer on top of that to make sure I'm extra sanitary. You gotta be clean when you're making bacon, when you're baking stuff. When your hands are sufficiently covered in butter, my God, it's everywhere. Okay, now I got the butter off my hands. Give it one last little stir up. This is pretty thick dough. This is a little bit thicker than, maybe, no, 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 no. This is about the same consistency as the muffin dough. 
But I'm going to very, very carefully place this in the dish. Now remember, if you've got too much and it starts coming up over the top, you've got too much in there. This will rise. That's what the baking uh, soda was for. It's another type of leavener, which helps stuff rise when you're not using yeast. Now you probably wonder why we would use leaveners like a baking soda or baking powder when we could use yeast because they both do the same thing. They both, they all make the bread rise, or the dough rise. The difference is, one, you don't have to let the bread or the dough double rise when you're not using yeast. You only have to just put it right in the mixture. And two, yeast is giving off, you know, those gases and they, you know, have their own special type of flavor. And when you're making something like this banana bread or a lot of other things that you don't use yeast in, it's because you don't want that yeasty flavor in there, you know. So we use those other things instead. Oh boy, that's looking good. Get off the top. You're gonna I'm trying to make it perfect. So you take your once you got it all in there, you know, you take your spatula and just press it down in a little bit lightly, very gently, very gently, and get it to be nice and flat. You want it to be fairly even all the way around before you pop it in the old the old oven there. I keep messing with it, I'm gonna make it worse. Alright, I got as much as I can off there. So just like the other stuff we've done, you know, it's not all the way up. I've only got it about two-thirds of the way up there. Boop, boop, boop. Right about there. All the way across. So that's ready to pop in the old oven there. And one last time, just in case you haven't seen my videos yet, or you haven't been listening, don't lick it. Don't. Insubordinate. All right. So I take it, put it in the oven again, put it right in the middle rack. Be careful putting it in there. Set it in, put it right in the middle of the oven. The further to the extremities, either the back, the front, the top, or the bottom that you put in the oven, the less even, evenly it will bake. All the heat in the oven kind of circulates around a little bit. So if you put it right in the middle, that's where it's going to have the most consistent temperature. And you want a nice consistent temperature. So we're going to set our timer for 50 minutes. Oh, that's the calculator. One hour. We'll start at 50 minutes, actually. All right. So our timer is started. Our bread's in the oven. You've got about an hour. So, uh, I don't know. Clean up. Uh, get ready to have some bread. All right, my dudes. The timer is done. The time has come to check this banana bread. Ooh, this might actually need a little bit more time. I'm looking at it right now, and there's a nice break right in the top. And this might be because we took it out once. Let's check it one more time. Yep, there's still stuff on that knife. There's quite a bit coming off, actually. So, whoop, I probably shouldn't have done that. <laughs> Mistake number 12. We're going to put it back in. There's a three fifth man. That's you know, might need another five or ten minutes. So let's uh, throw it back in the oven. Let's set another timer. Now this recipe said you know fifty minutes to an hour, or until the tester inserted into the center comes out clean. Now that's the standard in any baking recipe. You don't want anything on that. So we're just going to set this timer just for another you know ten minutes, and we'll start it. Now, when you're doing this, you don't want to check it too much because every time you open that oven, heat comes out and you lose all that cooking power. So, we're going to leave it in there for another eight minutes. I'm going to go eight minutes before we pull it um, and see how far we are. There was quite a bit left to be cooked in the middle of the dough there. So, I'm just going to leave her beaver. Okay, less enthusiastic try number three. Now I really want some of this bread because it smells super good. 
but it's just not ready yet. Maybe? It looks like the dough's a little firmer in the middle. Let us see. Oh, we're so close. All right, there's still only, there's only a little bit left on that knife. So maybe like, dos minutos. Two minutes. See, if I made it, I waited until my timer went off. Okay, so we're gonna set it for two more minutes. Maybe three, three minutes, two minutes. Two minutes because I've been talking so long. And then we're gonna pull it out one more time. And this time it should be done. I hope. Okay. So the final alarm went off. Now I'm using what I like to call Baker's intuition. Because I think it still needs, you know, like 30 seconds, 45 seconds, because it was still pretty wet. So I'm not really worried adding an extra minute onto this that it's going to be really dry or anything or too crusty. I think that extra minute is going to make it nice and solid so I don't have to pop it back in again. I'm just running on gut now. We're going off script, guys. There's no script. There's never a script. I do this all ad lib. 100%. When does your baker's tuition kick in? It's now. It's now. It kicks in now. I'm going to close this up. We're not turning the oven off yet, just in case, you know, my novice baker's intuition is off. Ho, 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 ho. Check it on the other side. That looks good. That's good. That is D-O-N-E done. So now I'm going to turn off my oven. We're going to let this sit for another... Five, ten minutes, not maybe ten minutes. We're gonna let it sit for a little while. Before it cools off though, what I like to do is just take the knife and gently run it around the edge here. Now I can feel that there's not too much resistance, so it shouldn't be too bad anyways. And sometimes if you don't use enough butter or spray, it won't come out clean. So I like to do that, maybe spread the sides out. I can do that because I use this tin. If you use a full metal one that's like a hardened bake pan you won't be able to push it but you can still run your knife around the outside okay we've got our bread ready it's been sitting cooling off for a little while so it should be good i'm still gonna use my mitts just in case but i'm just gonna carefully flip this over okay i can't do this i need my fingers can't do it boom oh look at that it's still steaming Oh, it smells so good, though. It's nice and spongy. Holds together nice. Look at it! Look at my little baby! See, it came out nice nice and clean right out of the pan. There's a little bit left in there, but it's not that much. That's why you do a good job buttering it up when you put it in. So, yeah. Blee -ba -dee -ba -dee. That's all, folks. That's making banana bread. The longest part about it is the cooking in the oven. You know, it took me about an hour for it to get totally settled maybe a little bit more like an hour and five minutes but super simple kind of like the muffins this is one you can do like mix up pretty quick you know if you do this right next to dinner that you're making you know have one person working on your dinner one person doing the bread when you're almost done with dinner you know stir it up put it in the pan pop it in the oven while you eat and while you clean up it'll be baking and by the time you're done eating and cleaning and putting all your utensils and plates and stuff from dinner away, this should be ready to go. All right, since I'm gonna be serving this to other people, make sure you wash your hands. Probably should have like a cutting block, whatever. So, I'm gonna cut some crust there, ooh. Oh, look at that. That is beautiful. Good test. Oh, Paul Hollywood would be so proud of me. All right, so a good test here to make sure everything is done is when you press this, that it pops back up. It should be soft and spongy. You know, it'll leave a little indent, but it'll pop back up. 
That means that you know it's cooked just the right amount. It's not overdone. It's not undercooked. That is ready to. I wish the lighting was better so you could see it. That's so good. Does any good baker will tell you? You know, you got to make sure. Oh, let me bring it over here. You can be in there. Let the people see what they want. The bread. You got to try it out. This is my first time making it. It turned out pretty well. Mm. That's pretty good. One thing I might have done different is added maybe a little riper bananas. I think that would make it give it a stronger banana flavor. And I've got the end. And we'll see as we get in here how much banana flavor there's really in there. But it's still good. That crust is perfect. It's got a little tiny bit of crunch to it. But it's not like really crunchy. Inside it's nice and warm and moist. Mmm, I love banana bread. That concludes episode three. I've been trying to pick out stuff that takes a little less time than donuts. My first experience was, it took a long time. I want something simple and easy and quick that you can make at home. And this was another good one that I love. You can also add, you know, nuts to this if you like. When I'm making something, I always try to be conscious of who might have allergies or who doesn't like nuts and stuff. And if you're not sure, just don't put them in there, but you can add walnuts to this recipe. Won't change anything. Oh, it's still be so good. Oh my god. Alright, I'm gonna go have <laughs> the rest of this. <laughs> yeah, it's mine now. <laughs> this is my, my banana bread. No, I'm gonna go share it, I promise. But yeah, I hope you had fun watching this. Make sure that you hit the subscribe button wherever it is, like this video, share it with your friends, leave a comment in the comment section down there, and uh, tell me what else you want to see, because I'm going to do a bunch of these, and if you keep giving me ideas that are reasonable, I'll keep on doing it. Alright, Jack, signing out, episode 3, the Wednesday Lunch Bank. See you in a week!